Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Ahkam SOS and on the auspicious occasion of the birth of the holy grandson of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi and the son of Sayyidah Fatima Zahra sallallahu alayhi and also the son of Imam Ali, the one and only Imam Hassan al Mujtaba alayhi salam. We are Imam Hussein TV, myself and also the Sheikh, would like to send our congratulations to the Muslim Ummah, especially the Imam of our time. May Allah hasten his repairs on the uh, birth anniversary of his grandfather, Imam Hassan al Mushtaba. Inshallah, um, all of you are going to be celebrating this evening. Maybe you're going to have something extra special for your iftar, maybe a sweet dish, also a cake, uh, maybe it's jelly and custard, ice cream, whatever. Please, please get involved in the celebrations. Even though it's quarantine, even though we're on lockdown, this cannot stop us from celebrating the auspicious occasions of the Ahlul Bayt. And inshallah, we wish you all a merry, merry evening. I'm your host, Mosin Shah, and joining me is Sheikh Ali Ma. Assalamu alaikum, Sheikh Na. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. How are you this evening? How's your fast going? Alhamdulillah, all fine. Alhamdulillah. Asad, asad. Congratulations to you on the birth of Imam Hassan al Mujtaba. And let me ask you, Sheikh Na, what is the meaning of al Mujtaba and, and who gave Imam Hassan this title? A'udhu billah as Sami' al Ali min al Shaytan al Rajim. Bismillah al Rahman al Rahim. الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين ورعنة الله على عدائهم أجمعين I would like to also forward my tabriq to our beloved Imam Al-Hajj Ajallah Farajah Al-Sharif and to the respected ulama and scholars and to the mu'minin and mu'minat the faithful and the believers of Ahl al-Bayt on this great occasion of the birth of Imam Al-Hassan Al-Mushtaba alayhi salam one of the members of Ashabul Kisa, Salamullahi Alayhim Ajma'in. And may Allah give us the opportunity and tawfiq to go and visit his grave in the holy city of Medina, mm-hmm. in the Baqi' graveyard, insha'Allah, and to give us this opportunity, insha'Allah, the tawfiq to rebuild uh, the shrines of, of the demolished ones in which we can see and witness today on their graves. There's no shrine, there's no zarih. Inshallah, they will be rebuilt very soon. Bihaqqa Muhammad wa Ali Muhammad, inshallah. Allah, inshallah. Um, with regard to your uh, question about uh, the meaning of Al-Mushtaba and who named uh, this title to the uh, Imam alayhi salam. Initially, Al-Mushtaba means the selected one, the chosen one. Uh, let's say you have a class filled with uh, 30 students and you choose the best amongst those students, the best one, the most intelligent, the most uh, knowledgeable, the most uh, more disciplined, akhlaq, all aspects. Allah Azza wa Jal chose Imam Hassan alayhi salam also, al-mushtaba, amongst all the creation, to be the hujjatullahi ala al-ard and to represent, represent Allah Azza wa Jal, uh, on this earth. Of course, this title and uh, and other titles, of course, to Ahl Bayt is given, and specifically this title to Ahl Bayt is given by Allah Azza wa Jal through the angel Jibreel alayhi salam and delivered by Rasulullah Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, in which um, these sacred names and titles by Allah Azza wa Jal. So we see, for example, in narration that Jibreel alayhi salam, he comes down from the heavens and he says to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, Sammih al-Hasan, name him al-Hasan. Of course, a long hadith um, that Allah Azza wa Jal, he sends his, his salutation to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, to name Imam al-Hasan himself. Allah Azza wa Jal named him al-Hasan. So imagine this greatness of this holy household that even their names, Allah Azza wa Jal would uh, take part in naming them. Mm-hmm. Allah alayhim. So yes, um, their names, the titles are given by, uh, named by Allah Azza wa Jal. Ahsan. I think the story is, um, Rasulullah comes to meet the baby and ask Imam Ali, have you named him yet? And Imam Ali says, no, I haven't. How can I name him without, you know, you being present and, had, um, you know, speaking to you and getting your advice? And then the Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi, you know, he, he speaks to Hazrat Jibreel and so forth. <coughs> Shaykhna, 
I believe Sayyid Ayatollah Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi rahmatullah alayhi, had a question once proposed to him and it was in regards to the history and the political stance of Bani Hashim with the Umayyads. Now when we look at Imam Ali and Muawiyah there's, there's conflict but when we look at Imam Hassan and Muawiyah there's a peace treaty but then we look at Imam Hussein and we look at Yazid the Man'oon there's, there's conflict and there's war. So my question or if you can if we can discuss the answer of Sayyid Muhammad Shirazi in regards to was there a contradiction here between having a peace treaty with you know Imam Hassan and Muawiyah and then there was conflict and war in Karbala between Imam Hussein Salam and Yazid the Man'oon Well um, there is no contradiction and conflict between these two uh, states um, because the time of Imam Hassan السلام, was different than the time of Imam Hussein السلام. and of course um, uh, the, 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 the um, how can I say um, the battle of Karbala was paved the way for this battle for Imam Hussein السلام, to go and uprise and, and so forth and become shaheed and martyr but the same uh, um, situation was not paved for Imam Hassan -Islam to go and to become a martyr on the battlefield and do similar to what his brother -Islam did on the land of Karbala. So the Imam Hassan -Islam inclined towards the ceasefire, truce, or let's say peace treaty, as they mentioned, uh, instead of uh, uprising. And of course, um, otherwise, Imam Hassan -Islam would have uprised in the time of Muawiyah 10 years. Imam Hussein was living in Medina in the time of Muawiyah and, and, he, and he never revolted against Muawiyah who was worse than his son Yazid. Muawiyah was the worst, was the establisher of deviation in Islam, establisher of dhulm in Islam. He was the one who established and paved the, the way for his son Yazid and also to Bani Umayyah, Umayyah for the next 78 years to rule in oppression and suppression against the Muslims. So Muawiyah was the worst, but the Imam السلام, did not find it that it was the right time to uprise against him until Yazid declared um, his leadership falsely and uh, of course forced Ahl Medina to give uh, the bay'ah to him. In, in a letter he sent in detail to the Imam as, as well and to others of Bani Hashim and others to give bay'ah, otherwise they're going to be killed, and assassinated. Um, when we see, for example, uh, the hadith mentioned by Rasulullah which states, the Prophet says, These two are my sons. You see, they call, he calls them Ima, uh, Ibnaya. He doesn't mm -hmm. call them uh, Hafidaya or my, my uh, grandsons. grandsons, my yeah. sons. In Ayatul Mubahala, what we have, Abna'ana wa Abna'akum. Your son is yeah. our sons. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he calls Hassan and Hussein his sons. Imaman, Qama or Qa'da, they are both Imams. Whether they uh, uprise or they sit down and incline to truce or ceasefire. They are both Imams. Each of them has uh, obligations and duties to see if it's the right time to uprise. They would uprise, otherwise they would incline to peace and uh, peace uh, treaty or ceasefire and so forth. So they are hujjatullah al ard they, they know their duties and of course uh, they are imams of uh, al bayt alayhim as salam in which the humanity should uh, obey and uh, follow them of course excellent and uh, just want to let um, the people know as well that there's more information available i think we have a documentary on it in regards to imam hassan and, and the peace treaty and also that there were 10 points and none of them were honored and actually Karbala happened because the peace treaty was broken so many times and so many of the points were broken. Um, Sheikh, now you mentioned that Sayyid um, Imam Hassan al-Mujtaba is buried in uh, Medina and uh, is buried um, not next to his grandfather but in the Jannat al -Baqi. Now we've heard that they say Aisha, uh, the, the prophet of the wife, uh, the wife of the prophet, attacked the janaza of uh, Imam Hassan and and stopped them from burying Imam Hassan next to his grandfather Rasulullah is is this true is this the correct narration 
yet when it is mentioned in the um, the books of the uh, Shia and the non-Shia, both sources clearly mention that uh, one Imam al-Hassan was poisoned and eventually martyr martyred and been shaheed. Mm -hmm. um, they brought the uh, the Bani Hashim brought the coffin and the janaza of Imam al-Hassan so they can take it and bury it next to his grandfather Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi. However, uh, Marwan and Aisha and others, they gathered and they prevented from being the Imam alayhi salam to be buried next to his grandfather, imagine. So um, that's why Imam al-Hassan alayhi salam was buried in the Baqi' cemetery and graveyard. And see what Aisha said when she saw the janazah of Imam Hassan alayhi salam. It's mentioned in the books, you can find out. She and when she narrate these incidents and events, she said that لا تدخل بيتي من لا أحب Do not bring in my house the one who I don't like. Aisha, she declared it that she doesn't like Imam al Hassan. She doesn't like Ahlul Bayt at all. And the one who does not like Ahlul Bayt will never ever see paradise, will, will never be able to scent the smell of paradise at all. The one who hates Ahlul Bayt is in hellfire. And Allah gave the example about the wives of, of two prophets that they will go to hellfire. Mm -hmm. You know, they are not infallible, they're not masumin. Yes. They are fallible, they can commit sins, they can commit haram, even if they were the wives of the prophets. So, a clear indication that Imam Hassan sallallahu alayhi uh, was mazloom in this situation. He was not able to be buried in next to his uh, grandfather's grave. And of course, uh, due to the wasiyah of Imam Hassan, the, the will, Imam Hassan sallallahu alayhi took the janaza towards the baqi' and he buried him uh, there in the genital baqi' uh, as a result to prevent bloodshed uh, and to basically protect Bani Hashim and the Muslims. Uh, I, I believe the narration also states there was two janaz. The coffin has to, had to come out twice. It came out, it was attacked, they, they shot arrows, they took the coffin back in, um, you know, and then they decided to take it to Janatul Baqi and, and, and a second time. May Allah curse the enemies of the Ahlul Bayt. Shaykhna, uh, before we go on to the Ahkam side, just finally, could you shed some light on Imam Hassan alayhi salam's outstanding merits? Inshallah. Um, initially, Imam al Hassan Salamullah Alayh is the master of the youth of the heavens. Sayyidah Shabab Ahl al Jannah. He is the master there, not somebody else. Not the ones who came and shot the arrows on her, on his uh, uh, coffin and janaz. Salamullah Alayh. He is the master. Um, and he was one of the four people who uh, came to uh, the event of the Mubahala. Mm -hmm. The Holy Prophet was the guy to the contest of the Mubahala uh, with the Christians of Najran. He came out with Ali, Fatima, Hassan, and Hussein uh, for the Mubahala contest. So he was one of them. Also, he was one of those five persons who were under the cloak, under the Kasa, the Hadith yes, Kasa, yes, the famous yes. Hadith. Yes. Even the non Shia narrated that uh, when the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he gathered uh, those four uh, uh, of Ahl Bayt Alayhim Salam under the cloak, the Kitha, and they were blessed by the Malaika by Allah Azza wa Jal in a prolonged hadith that we recite uh, in our Ladiya. Also, he was one of the 12 Imams of Ahl Bayt. He was one, one of the Hujjatullah uh, Ala Al-Ard, one of the Imams, not only just the son of Ali and Fatima alayhim salam but he was an Imam Ma'asum of Tarad al-Ta'a his Ta'a is wajib obedience is wajib on every uh, human being also he was among those who uh, were pu purified by the verse in the Holy Quran Ayat uh, al-Tathir when Allah said in the Holy Quran وَيُطَهِرَكُمْ تَطْهِيرًا to purify you thorough purification so he is mutahhar from all sins, purified from any wrongdoings or sins or mistakes. And not finally, but I have to 
basically stop there. Um, he was part of the Hadith of Taqalain. Uh-huh. When the Prophet ﷺ said, I leave two weighty things, it heavy things. Mm-hmm. Book of Allah and my progeny. Atrati Ahl Bayti. So, of course, Imam Hassan this is just a glimpse, just a small indications of his fadail. You know, there are lots of lots of fadail as well mentioned in the hadith and the, the history. And what has been hidden from us is greater even. Hassan, thank you so much, Sheikh Nana. We go towards Ahkam. And just a quick reminder to all our viewers that uh, we do take in your questions. If you have a question you'd like to ask us, please send it in via, uh, via the WhatsApp or you can email us. Alternatively, you can give us a call and me and the Sheikh will be more than happy to discuss your question. I believe uh, I think it's over there. that's where the details are, inshallah. Sheikh, um, there are some people who live quite far away from mosques and so forth. So they rely on the government to actually establish the first of Ramadan. Um, some people don't have access to scholars or to Hussainia or Masajid and stuff. So they wait, you know, the only news they get is from from the television or from the new from the, like the you know um, from the media that oh today's the first of Ramadan. Are we allowed to you know rely upon these, especially when the moon sighting is not available? What if that organization or government, or whoever it is, uh, made the sighting of the moon with accordance to the Sharia that we have in our fiqh? They actually saw the moon. There were uh, all the conditions of the sighting of the moon were met. Uh, then uh, it should be fine, they can follow. Otherwise, it is not permissible to follow the statements or the declaration of the government when it says, you know, tomorrow is first day of Ramadan or tomorrow is Eid. And we've seen that in many of the countries, Muslim countries, that it turned out to be uh, the wrong <laughs> declaration. Yes, it wasn't yes. actually the first day or, or the Eid day. And they had to, the government had to pay actually uh, the kafar <laughs> on behalf of the people. Because they made the mistake of not citing the moon correctly, or I don't know what the reason is, but anyway, they couldn't actually uh, find out which day was actually the first day of Ramadan. But uh, I just said, uh, you can't rely on the governments unless they do it according to the Sharia uh, rules and ahkam and so forth. Awesome. Sheikh, we've got a question that's coming from one of the viewers saying that. Uh, I am suffering from a problem with my kidney. Dehydration will affect my kidney and worsen my health. What is my duty about fasting? I follow Sayyid Sistani. So according to Ayatollah, uh, Sayyid Sistani, what is the hukum for this person who has a kidney uh, issue? He would mention that you cannot fast in the mentioned case. And if the situation of illness continues till uh, next year's Ramadan, which in, in fact you couldn't actually uh, uh, do the qada, then the qada is not obligatory. You don't have to do the qada, but you have to pay fidya for each day. Ascent, ascent. Shedna, you mentioned days that are forbidden to fast in. What about days which are maybe makru or, or discouraged from, but it's, it's not haram to fast on those days? Well, one of the discouraged days or makruh days to fast is the day of Ashura that we have, in which the believers of Ahl Bayt are mourning the martyrdom of Imam Al Hussein on the day of Karbala. Um, so it's makruh because it seems, to, it seems to be that fasting is some kind of uh, praising Allah or thanking Allah for something uh, that he, he gave this individual. So it's makruh to fast on that day. It could be the sign of celebration, it could be the sign of happiness and joy. Um, also, uh, it is makruh to fast the day in which we are in doubt. Is it uh, the day of Arafah or, or is it the day of Eid al-Adha? In that mm-hmm. doubt day, it's better to avoid fasting. I see, I said. Sheikh, um, mustahab fast, especially for children. What if this fast is, you know, against the will of the parents or the parents are, are annoyed by this saying that, oh no, we're, we're trying to, you know, go somewhere or travel or we want to do this, we want to do that. For some reason, they don't want their child to do a mustahab fast. Can that child continue his mustahab fast? Especially when the parents are, you know, discouraging him or, or annoyed by him doing so, or her doing so. Um, yes, it is forbidden for the child to fast um, if his parents 
or it's causing annoyance to his parents. You know, they get angry and they are displeased with this act of this child because it could harm him, for example, for any reason. Mm-hmm. If somebody is annoying uh, parents uh, by fasting mustahab, I mean, the, the child basically is not allowed to fast in this case. Sheikh, is it allowed for a wife to observe a mustahab fast? Yes, the wife is allowed to observe mustahabat, prayers, uh, uh, salawat, uh, tasbih, fasting, for example. All are fine. Uh, but however, if if this type of fast, which is a mustahab fast, not wajib, if this type of mustahab fast um, causes um, a denial, or, or let's say uh, the husband is not happy with this fast, and denial of the husband's rights, because there are rights for the husband, if she fasts, then they can't basically uh, fulfill the rights. In this case, uh, it would be haram for her to fast. And of course, Islam tries to bring back or to bring close uh, the couples, you know, the, uh, the husband and wife, even to, to the extent that mustahab would be waived and to stay next to her husband would be even greater and better in some cases. So you can see how Islam encourages that more um, affection, more love and respect towards each other rather than just, you know, isolate yourself and sit down and do mustahabbat all the day. Mm-hmm. Sheikh, um, a question coming from the WhatsApp. I, I think it's actually a very, very good question. If there is a blind man who is fasting and someone tells him that, oh, Maghrib has set in, you can open your fast. But later on, he finds out that actually, no, it was the wrong time. It, it was a couple of minutes earlier or so, or so. What is this blind person supposed to do? Is the fast still valid or does he have to repeat the fast? Or her, or he, you know, he or she have to repeat the fast? It becomes obligatory and wajib to perform the qada of this day, but there's no kafara. I so see. qada, yes, but no kafara. Okay. And what if one rinses his mouth with water to cool down, or for no reason, and some water inadvertently is swallowed? Again, uh, this individual needs to do the qada of this day, and of course there's no kafar, but the qada is important that to be uh, observed. After the holy month of Ramadan, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Sheikhna, for all your time and for all your efforts. And thank you to all the viewers for joining us. Once again, a big, big congratulations to you all as it is the birth of Imam al Hassan. Inshallah, you guys will be celebrating in your homes. Um, and inshallah, with you know, with, with the prayers, with your dua, uh, this lockdown can be uplifted, this quarantine can finish. And inshallah, for the next celebrations, inshallah, and uh, memorials, because we do have some istishad coming up as well, uh, inshallah, we can continue these programs in our uh, Husseiniyat and in our mosque rather than at home. Um, thank you so much, Sheikh. Thank you to all the viewers. Inshallah, we'll be back tomorrow at 6.30 again here on Imam Hussein TV. Uh, see you tomorrow. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah wa barakatuh.